Hi, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium, and I am thrilled, and I mean truly honored to have with me a Fefe from Truly Touched by Tarot. That is her website. Now, her YouTube channel is Touched by Tarot. And listen, I know you guys remember a Fefe. I've had her on my channel before. She's an amazing tarot reader, and she also mixes tarot and astrology for some very unique readings. You guys can check her out on trulytouchedbytarot.com for readings. But in the meantime, welcome. Welcome, hey. welcome. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Always, always a pleasure. Always. It's a been pleasure. too long. It's been too it's been long. a minute. It's been a minute, but right on time. We do things when we're meant to do them. So I really appreciate you having me again. And, and you know, you know how I feel about you. Same, Always. Same, Always. same thing. And so I want to tell you guys, here's what we're going to be doing today. You know, I like to get down to business. We're going to be talking about politics. But we're going to be talking about politics from a very unique angle. And I think it's one that we all need to take a moment and really dive into. We've all done the politics through the tarot and through my spirit guides, and sometimes even through astrology. But what Afefe does is she mixes tarot and astrology together to get some very unique and powerful insights. And I also want to tell you guys, we're going to be talking about something that's coming up. It would happen to be the midterms, but it would also happen to be a total lunar eclipse in Taurus on the same day. So I don't know what that's going to do, but it's going to do something. <laughs> it's going to do something. So I'm going to ask Afefe to, to jump in here and tell us what we can expect, if you don't mind. No, absolutely. My pleasure. Um, a lot. Well, we can also, let me start out by saying, Susan, we can expect the unexpected. And I'll explain that as well. Um, because this, I'm first of all, I'm so happy that we are covering this from a political angle as well. Because as you know, very often on my channel, I don't do a lot of politics, but my background in journalism, I certainly, you know, have covered politics a lot in, in that aspect of my career. So comfortable with the subject. So glad to have an opportunity to get on here with you because I come to your channel all the time to just kind of wrap my head and listen to you and your guides about what the heck is going on. Um, from the astrological and tarot perspective, as you said, we know we've got these midterms coming up on November 8th. That is the same day that we have a total lunar eclipse, 16 degrees of, Sor of Taurus. Now, let me start out by saying this. When you think about Taurus, Taurus is a fixed sign. Mm -hmm. It correlates in tarot, it correlates to the card, a major arcana card called the Hierophant. You may have heard of that before, oh, okay? That. Yeah, it correlates to the Hierophant. The Hierophant, very often ruled by Taurus, as I'm saying, represents those things that we believe in, people that we believe in, very often governmental structures, all right? So, so in the context of a total lunar eclipse, when we get an eclipse, we're dealing with some energy where there's bound to be something that can abruptly shift in front of our eyes, right? What more, you know, so in what greater way is that going to be demonstrated than our pending elections here in America? Because we know there's going to be all sorts of shifts across the country in all different states, all these different races, congressional, statewide, et cetera. So this eclipse is coming to basically say, announce itself and say, within our structures and those things that we have come to rely on and believe in and the things that we were taught fundamentally in our democracy, taught as in the Hierophant, who very often is this teacher, this authority figure, um, these, these, these ideas that we lay our beliefs on, our foundations on, all of this starts to come into question around the time of this full moon lunar eclipse. Now, more specifically, when we talk about Taurus, we're talking about 
um, things that, that we possess, things that we value. Taurus is an earth sign. It is ruled by Venus. What, is, what do we think about? When we th- we, often we just want to go to love, right? Nothing wrong with that. I'll do it. I'll go there. All. <laughs> but it's also about Venus rules our pleasures, our material pleasures as well. So in Taurus, we're talking about the things that we, we value, the things that we, that we are personal possessions, our homes, how we are the cars that we drive, how we live in the world, how we're able to afford financial markets, government elections, crucial issues that we're facing, right? How we are able to afford and lead the lives that we feel like we deserve, that we work for. So those are very Taurus sort of oriented things. Taurus is also a what we call a fixed sign, meaning you may have heard uh, the, t- the term Taurus the bull and that Taurus energy can sometimes be very fixed, very stubborn, you know, and also very um, persevere on a, on a positive note, able to persevere and, and have a tremendous amount of patience to get what it wants. Okay. But here we have, you know, in the midst of all of this inflation. So the things that sometimes the things that we want or, you know, financial markets up and down fluctuating. And so you would got this lunar eclipse in Taurus that says, hold up, wait a minute. We want what we want. We're accustomed to having what we have. We, we have this certain life that we're expected to be able to live. This is a democracy. We, we, this is, you know, this is what we do. And those, some of those things are being highlighted during this time where they're going to come into question, not in terms of whether or not we're entitled to them, but how does it all pan out? Mm. How does it all pan out based on the outcomes of many of these races across the country? All right. Who's going to, who's going to help, you know, uh, the economy, who's, who's really serious about that and who's just padding their own pockets, all of those things, those kinds of questions are coming up. Then we have this now, the, the total lunar eclipse in Taurus is happening when? While we are still in the sign of Scorpio. We're still in Scorpio season. All oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. Right? Right? Now, Scorpio season, what is Scorpio ruled by? Pluto. What does Pluto do? Oh, <laughs> S-H. <laughs> Think, think tea up, right? Yes, it does. Right? Yeah. Okay, yes, it does. All right. Oh, Lord, and Lord help us. In in tarot, it is ruled by one of the quote unquote scariest cards in the tarot deck, and that is death. Oh. Scorpio is ruled by death, death slash rebirth. All right. So then you have on the one hand this Taurus energy that that deals with the things that I want, the things that I deserve, the things that I've worked hard for, the kind of life that I, I feel like I should be able to live, that I've earned, that we as a collective, as a people believe in and, and the American dream. And then this, this Scorpio energy comes in and says, ha ha, that's all well and good. But there are some changes underfoot. There may be a death slash rebirth based on these midterms there are going to be people going out and there's going to be people going in right Right. and so there's this this mix up that's happening that's really fascinating and it's going to keep us on the edge of our seats because another thing that scorpio does is it reveals what's hidden it reveals what's hidden and that's something that you know, there's an argument to be made that Scorpio is one of the most powerful signs in the Zodiac because it will drill down. It will not, it was unrelenting when it comes to finding out the truth and being able to to reveal that truth in a way that there's nothing you can do but take it because you see it for what it is. So you're talking about a, a full moon. What does the moon do? For real? The moon, Are you for real? I am. I am for real. It's a. It's a full what, moon. It's a full moon. Okay, and what does the moon do? The moon comes in the dark of night to shed light on what is hidden. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. 
Yep. yep. And not just what's hidden, like little stuff, like the little fishies or the shells on the beach that are hidden, but the big stuff that's hidden with that Pluto influence. What? And so, the Scorpio yeah. influence. Wow. And that Scorpio influence. Exactly. So you've got all of this stuff happening mm-hmm. at once. And if that weren't enough, we got a third thing that I want to that I want to bring out that's going to be like, oh, OK, Woo. let me let me give me a minute, spirit. <laughs> give me a minute. I need Susan Lynn's guide. Right I'm going to need now. a minute. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're both going to need a minute. Guides. I'm telling you, the third thing that I want to uh, highlight is with all of this, we have Mars retrograde in Gemini from it started. uh, It went retrograde on the 30th and it will remain in retrograde until January 12th. Why is that important? Because when we think about it, Mars and Gemini in relation to Tarot, the emperor, Mars, Aries, I got this, I'm in charge. Listen, you know, fall in line behind me, people, let's go. We got this all figured out. Gemini, the lovers, well, wait a minute, let's talk it up, let's talk it out. There's two sides to a story here. There's a partnership here. There's, you know, let's mm-hmm. let's do some give and take here. Exactly. So Mars retrograde retrograde typically when mars is going direct or forward it is that emperor energy it is dun, 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 dun. don't worry about it i'm the hero i'm here to save the day i've got it all figured out just fall in line behind me we got this retrograde it says well i am who i am still but it's not a lot i can do right now it it gets it slows down retrograde says it, this energy that typically would be very, you know, forward momentum. We've got an agenda. We, we've, we've made some decisions in our, in our democracy. We, we know now where we're going. We've got a clear vision of what's ahead of us. In retrograde, it could be, I don't know about that. Because in Gemini, Mm-mm. it could be that our ability to normally advance an agenda, advance our ideas, be very clear and and ready and and have this sort of forward momentum has now stalled out. And it says, whoa, we're going to need a minute to to think about this. We're going to, we're going to need to think about the ways that, you know, can we really have constructive dialogue and retrogrades almost always make us that it's like the cosmos says get get a grip people because instead of being so focused on what's next we need you to take a minute to look at what's happened Mm. and so what what i have seen in my readings and what a lot of other astrologers i follow susan have been saying is be prepared post election between now and january that there may be a lot of of feeling like, whoa, we need to regroup. We need to regather. We need to think about where we really stand um, and, and how we want to promote our ideas and our agendas. Maybe our agendas need a little tweaking. And the last thing on that note I wanted to say before I shut it up and, and I want to really hear what you feel about this is, this is going to be a zinger. When I was digging a little more into this Mars uh, retrograde in Gemini. Get ready. It says one of the things that it talks about from a site that I saw, it said, we're going to have to reevaluate our attachment to our opinions. And it's going to give us a chance to change our mindset and the way we motivate ourselves. So when I thought about attachment to our opinions in a political context and having to reevaluate some things, I'd love to hear what you think about Liz Cheney oh. saying, <laughs> I, I knew it. I knew you were going to lean in like, okay, Pepe, where the heck are we about to go? Mm-hmm. But Liz Cheney, mm-hmm. having said recently that there, in her mind, there is the potential for a spinoff of a new conservative party Yes. Or some okay. sort of difference to that. And that is exactly what, that is so emblematic of this Mars retrograde in Gemini. Reevaluating what our opinions about what we, like, are, is it really a two-party system down the road? 
is that is that the way we go or are we at a crossroads where you know in terms of the cosmos and other energetic forces are at play that we're being called to reevaluate what what we need and how we can go forward wow that was amazing yeah. thank you so much uh that that like I know everybody's like paused and already rewatched what you said three times by now <laughs> because you just gave us so much at it's one time. Um, and it's important stuff. It's not fluff. It's like action packed uh, sentences. So your your question. So I did not know that Liz Cheney said that. Um, yeah. But I will say that the guides, the spirit guides have been saying since not too long after Jan 6, that Cheney would either take over the Republican Party or create a new one. Uh, so they've been saying that about her. She would either um, take it over. Now, when you say take it over, I mean, obviously they voted her out. So, I mean, how's she going to do that, right? Well, she's sitting on the Jan 6 committee, basically um, helping Jan 6 and hopefully the courts um you know, deal with these people, deal with, with these Republicans that may have been involved in Jan 6 and or some other nefarious things. So she's she's basically joined our side to root out those people, okay? Now, the fact, I, I'm going to say it again, guys, I honestly, Liz Cheney, what my spirit guides have said about her from the get-go are these two words, formidable opponent, formidable opponent. That's all they say about her. They don't say she's evil. They don't say she's wrong. They say she's a formidable opponent. I'm the one that says she's evil and she's wrong. <laughs> but here's the thing. She sat on the Jan 6 committee. She comes across as a very straightforward, plain talking, you know, by the books kind of person. And that's very appealing to people. And I have a lot of viewers and a lot of people who say she's not a bad person. We we should vote for her or, or Biden should bring her into his cabinet until she can run again. Well, that's all well and good, but but I would like to remind those folks in the jury once again that her voting is not over 90% in support of what Trump's platform was. Over 90% of the time she voted right along with Trump. This woman is not a Democrat. She's not even a moderate Republican. She is a Republican who's looking for power. She was a House of Representatives. She wasn't even a senior, a senator. Her dad is very powerful, and she was trying to figure out, how can I get to the top of this ladder? How can I get to the top of this pyramid? Well, these big dummies gave her an opportunity with their silliness, you know, with their, and they continue, don't they? You know, they just continue to dig their own graves. And she's letting them. She's like, here's another shovel. Would you like a backhoe? I can help you, right? So- so she's she is the fact that she's talking about starting another party is meant to scare some of those moderate Republicans that are sort of hiding because it is it, it's a brutal place to be a Republican, right? You have to fall in line behind the Trumpers or else God only knows what happens to you, right? You you probably yeah. get death threats. You who knows? Yeah. So she's hoping that some of those moderates will will join her. But if they don't, that just kind of a, I feel like it's a, she's just te trying to, uh, what do you call it? She's like testing the waters, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? But if she, I do. but if they don't join her, she will do it and she will take Democrats. I'm telling you guys, there's some kind of head fake going on that Democrats are falling for with her. And that, and I'm not saying, Am I saying that? Um, I had not seen her running in 2024, but I for president, but I can see her running for vice president for in 2024. Um, I mean, she could run. There, there might be 20 people or 15 people, right, that run, but I don't see her winning. But, but she could siphon away Democrats. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps, perhaps. And I, I'm, I'm probably among some of those, some of your um, viewers who have said, "Well, Susan, can we just cut her a little slack?" But I also like, I, which I love about you, like, don't, don't drink the Kool Aid, FSA. Don't drink the Kool Aid. I'm telling you, don't do it. I don't trust her. But what I find fascinating is that the dialogue is even beginning to be had, right? Whoever thought, who had the temerity to talk about going outside of a two-party system in, in American politics? And so the idea that, she, and if she wants the power that bad, then are the stakeholders able to hold her feet to the fire and say, okay, Missy, but if you want this, it ain't gonna be what you always thought it was. It's gonna be this, that, and the other. And would she, you know, would she be willing to, you know, have a, mm. have a, you know, a come to Jesus, you know, kind of moment as you were, or a Paul on the road to Damascus moment where she begins to realize, you know, I'm not saying she's going to wake up one day and be any of our, our BFF, you know, our best buddy. And I'm not going that far. But I do wonder if, in fact, she wants to continue some sort of a career Just, in politics and not on the national platform. And she realizes she is, she, didn't she lose by double digits in August? I mean, it was something like she got trounced. And so she knows at this point, I've hit the end of the road there. I've hit the skids. I can't go back there. If I want to stay relevant, if I want to continue to have an impact, I got to go over here. And maybe she can't do it with that voting record that she had. You know, maybe she's going to do a lot of explaining. To, to get people around her and to maybe coalesce around her. I just find it fascinating. Who the funk it? That, that someone of her caliber would even come out and say, I'll leave. I'll leave and start something new. Like, who the funk and it? you're right on the money because the guide said a while back that watch for her to make a move to the middle. So she's already said, not that, you know, it was, a while back, but she's already come out and said, well, I was wrong about gay marriage because her sister is gay, but she had always been against gay everything. And then she came out and said, well, I was wrong. So what I watch for is exactly what you said, is her starting to remake her image because Democrats are so, I think we tend to look for the good in people and we so love the story, right, of the wayward person coming back. You know what I mean? Um, the prodigal daughter. The <laughs> prodigal daughter, right? So so if she came like you just said and said, I got some explaining to do. I have really thought about things and I really feel like my values are more in the center of Republican. And I really think these Republicans have gone too far. Look. She would be, she would, she would be formidable. She would be formidable. All she has to do is come out and say, what are my brothers and sisters talking about with Paul Pelosi? Why would That's they it. say such horrible things? All she's got to do is be normal and say, I shouldn't have voted with Trump. I don't know what I was thinking. I've changed my mind. Prodigal daughter. Let me tell you, she would just scoop up the votes. She could do it. She could do, do it. it. And, and I, I, don't, and I, tell and I you, don't trust her, FFA. I just don't, I, I, I don't, don't care her. what she says. She's still got stripes and she's going to have stripes anyway. You know, she can say okay. I'm a cheetah now all she wants, but she she's not. They say a tiger don't mean. change their stripes. They don't. No, I, listen, I, I totally, totally, I would not, I would not volunteer to work at her in her campaign by any means, you know, but I, I just, again, I go back to the idea that even that the thought of that, you know, four years yeah, ago or whatever, the, you know, the, whatever. the whole thought of that and that, that Pluto, that change. Um, and I also, I don't know why I had this, this thought as you were speaking, Susan, about, you know, who did that? Um, Charlie Chris talking, you know, I'm here in Florida, pray for us. Um, <laughs> we need prayer. Uh, but you, you know, Charlie girl. Chris did that. Remember he was, he won as a Republican. Then he flipped and decided, oh, never mind. I, I was wrong. Now I'm a, and he won. You know, people bought into it. Is he, did he mean any of that or has he all along? And then I think he even did a stint as an independent and then had to declare an affiliation in order to get to, to Congress. Did he mean any of it or did he do what he had to do to remain relevant? That's a question. 
But again, I'm fascinated. Here he is. He was able to mount the support and the financial backing to actually mount this incredible campaign against DeSantis when there were others who said, you know, you're out here flip-flopping. Nobody believes a word you're saying anymore. You're done. And so I don't know. Maybe maybe there is some room for some of these people to, to you know, to revamp their image, to revamp their, their various stances on things. And, you know, does that mean they mean it? Uh, you know. I'm with your guides, probably not. But but just the idea that that we may be at that point in history That's where true. we're really ready to have a conversation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, about about what what does American democracy and what does our political system really look like at this point? Because so many people are feeling disenfranchised and and feeling and. You know, we know all the machinations going on behind the scenes to make to deliberately make it so with, you know, mail in voting and et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, they're making it harder and harder and harder for people in certain areas. I, I even understand that's one reason why Florida is in such a pickle right now, because they they went through ooh, Tallahassee did a number on this state. And, you know. The, the larger voting centers now, they just went around and said, here, 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 and here. And these other population centers, good luck. Gas up your car. Get a bus or something. Y'all can go together because we ain't going to make it easy for you. Makes you mad, doesn't it? It makes you mad. But I think it's like you're saying, it's the cocktail. It's all the energies. If you put all those energies that you're talking about. You know, and you put them in a glass, you know, it's the cocktail, it's the energy, the energy cocktail that is affecting everything, including, and I, I don't know if I, you just hit me like hard, like I can't wrap my head around the, the full moon with the elimination and Pluto and then Mars in retrograde. I can't, I can't fit all those pieces together to make a picture, um, I mean, you just scrambled lot. my brain for real. I'm so <laughs> sorry, but usually I can you know, keep what, up with what, you guys. But I'm what, like, what, I can't what, even keep up with that. I don't know. Game out. Game over. Game, I don't. No, never that. Never that for Susan Lynn. Never that. <laughs> and and, and base. But what's so fascinating about it is, okay, we we're accustomed to taking in information and trying to stay informed in terms of fact-based. Like we can sit up and watch Rachel Maddow and go, yep, 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 yep. You know, and we, and we can get that. What I'm fascinated by as a spiritualist is how much what is happening from an astrological perspective ties in with the nuts and bolts, mathematical, scientific, you know, laws and bylaws of what we see happening in front of us. And and I think, but often what I think the curveball that astrology throws us is it gives us, it gives us a window and it says, be on the lookout, but it doesn't give us a blueprint, you know, that's right? right? That's and right. that's the part that makes us go, okay, I know you just told me something. I know that I need to be, you know, but okay, what what is it? Like, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I was thinking about this when we said we were going to get together. And one analogy, but this is going to be a rough one, but so don't, it's not literal, but I'm saying it just in terms of sometimes having an, uh, an understanding afterward of what the cosmos is really telling us. When we were going into the pandemic, right before the pandemic, I didn't hear about this until afterward that the pandemic really lit 20 early 2020 was when Jupiter and Pluto went conjunct. You might have heard about that after the fact, but we talked about Pluto, big changes, blow stuff up, something you never heard about, the world's never going to be the same with Jupiter, which expands and grows. What did COVID do? Spread all over the world in in a blink of an eye. Yeah. Our world changed and there were astrologers that were telling us in advance, okay, you guys, we got, we got Jupiter and Pluto getting ready. But we were sitting there like, okay, (laughs) 
clearly that means something big is on the horizon. <laughs> No. But we didn't know. But well, we don't know what it is, you know, right? Yeah. We didn't know until later. So I'm not making a, you know, I'm not correlating that we're in for something that bad. I think we've gone through that. We've, you know, we're, we're, we're still here. We're still okay. And praying for those who were so much more negatively impacted by that and their healing process, I'm sure, continues. So let me say that in all earnestness. Um, but just in terms of astrology and understanding how it gives us a hint, but it doesn't give us a blueprint. And and so at least though, by by seeing it, then we're not so, you know, sometimes we're able to say after the fact, in hindsight, 2020, ah, so that's what that meant. And we're and it helps us process it. You know, it helps us not feel quite so uninformed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So the guides are talking about, because I'm over here steady going, y'all better help me. I'm like, there's there's pie charts, there's graphs going on up here. There's like an Excel spreadsheet being populated. I don't even do that stuff, y'all. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. But anyway, I'm not going to cry. Okay, here's the thing. I, I said, y'all going to have to break it down real simple for me. <laughs> so let's start with, Let's start with the, I think the biggest factors, they're telling me the biggest factors that aren't astrological, um, that are going to affect the midterms are women and younger people, like first time voters to younger people that maybe have voted very, you know, um, here, there, those two groups I think might be the Pluto influence on this election. Nobody saw them coming. Nobody is seeing them coming. Women, they don't, they don't even research us. Do you know what I mean? Medical yeah. research doesn't even use women, has not used women. Yeah. You can drill down from there and see just how many you know, black women and Asian women and, and American Indian women and, and Hispanic women. I mean, it just goes further south from that. So yeah. you can you can figure out from that that they're not they're not even asking any women, much less these very I feel like minority women were just trounced during COVID, they were on the front lines. They were the service workers. They were the nurses. They were the people that literally had to go to work. They were essential. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, they were the daycare people. They were, they were people that just had to go to work. And I feel like they're real tired. <laughs> you know, they're oh, yeah. real tired. And oh, yeah. now they can't buy groceries. The groceries are gone up, their rent's gone up. Their their gas has gone up. They're they're cranky, and now you want to tell me what I can and can't do with my own body. My body. Yeah. And now and now you're trying to make it easier for my children to be unsafe at school, and now you're trying to make it harder for for me to feel good about sending my teenage kids out to go to work or to walk or drive a car. You know, okay, it's oh, I just feel like. I feel like they've had it up to here. They're showing me mama. You know, when mama has had it up to here and you better just leave the house, you know, you just better go out in the backyard or ride your bike. You better just get out of the house. Yeah. (laughs) That's where I feel like women are right now. And no one is tapping into that energy. And I really think that's the Pluto. That's the, and, and so the illumination and, and then also the first time voters who are very upset about the student loans, not getting yeah. a job, not even wanting a job. They don't even want to work in this environment. Who would want to work in this environment? It's true. They, they go to go get their Uber. They're just going to go make their little money and do their little thing. They, they yeah. know they can't get a house, especially now. They can't get yeah. a degree. So they're just checking out. Yeah. Just checking out of our society. Yeah. And I also think um, in terms of those first time voters and in terms of that younger generation as well, Susan, I think one one really pivotal thing is, you know, when Roe v. Wade got got dismantled, a lot of that age group did not know or understand who Roe v. Wade was, what went in the women's movement, what it took 
to mm-hmm. get that law on the books. Mm-hmm. And I think there was this whole movement then, you know, this whole conversation that be like, well, who, who was Roe v. Wade and how did that happen? And I think when, when they understood, because a lot of these younger women have grown up with those rights just being, you know, it's like the right to vote. Nobody thought about, you know, in the generation, thought about the right to vote. You grew up, you were born, and when you got 18, you could go register, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think that's been a part of it as well, is the notion that this this was not something handed to women or to, you know, to people. This was something that people fought for. This was something that that people really had to make a stand for. This made a difference in our democracy. And I think that's going to be something to hopefully fuel people, those younger people to register and go to the polls um, as well, because there is this historic element to it. And I think people want to feel like they are a part of history to perhaps bring it back, you know, because that's one thing. There's an incredible uh, fearlessness to this younger generation. Yes. Like yes. They, they're not afraid. Nope. And and hopefully they will use some of that as well to to feel like they are a part of the solution and not just continue to listen to those who tell us, you know, what's going to happen. Not going to happen. Absolutely. So I agree with you. I agree with you. And I certainly I I want them to do it. I do. Um, there is a caution because of this energy. I will say it, I don't do fear mongering. I'm not about that at all. I believe in that we are protected and that there are higher forces, our guides, et cetera, that look over us. But we should be smart if 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 at all possible. I hope people are voting by mail and and voting in advance if they go to the polls on election day, just because of this energy and the fact that this lunar eclipse is happening on that day. So that means that's the, when the energy is, it's going to be, um, you know, crunch time, really. Just be aware, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what's going on, because we know that we live, we do live in a country right now where things can happen. People could be short tempered, words can be exchanged, things can escalate. We don't want any of that. We want this to be a peaceful process and hopefully a process that we all come away that night celebrating and very happy. But but there is, um, you know, I've I've seen it in my readings. I see it here in front of me. And I've heard lots of other astrologers who I respect um, say that because of this energy, just be be aware, watch your surroundings and, you know, take a buddy, you know maybe with you, that sort of thing, if if you go decide to go to the polls to vote. Absolutely. You know, in Texas, it's very hard to vote by mail. I mean, it's almost impossible. Oh, okay. um, but you can vote early. And I would urge you guys to vote early. I, I think there was a time in my life, not the, all that long ago, honestly, where I felt like I wanted to go on the day. You know what I mean? Like there was some like importance about the day. And then I think I got to a certain age and I said, you know what? I might break a leg and not be able to vote. I better. (laughs) So, I mean, you know, I, I started being, you know, like I've got to go get my vote on. Right. Um, Yeah. But I want to just implore people and especially younger people. I feel like the guides are saying there's this energy of we will go vote on the day. And we'll show our strength in numbers. We'll show who we are. I feel like this is this, what you were talking about with the youth being, uh, you know, just fearless, right? Um, I really would encourage you to talk to your kids, your grandkids, not to do that. Vote early. It's what we, the last thing we want is a showdown between honest people, citizens, voters that are standing in line and some of these bullies. And this is what FFA is saying. The energy yeah. is just setting up for that kind of showdown. And we don't really want that. No. Um, yeah. And I would also say, how how long does the lunar eclipse, What is how long does that energy last? The immediate impact is usually, uh, the full moon itself is usually around two weeks. So we're already, you know, you start to feel it a little bit ahead of time and two weeks out. But when you're talking about an eclipse, because it doesn't happen that often, then the after effect can go out as long as six months, right? 
Yeah. You could have given that me a mean, warning. <laughs> but that doesn't mean, you know, the intensity of it. It just means, so for instance, say, say a certain race is one that, mm-hmm. that wasn't expected, right? Mm-hmm. So then that person, there's a period of time before that person takes office. And then there's a period of time before that person puts their agenda into motion. You see what I'm saying? So there's a process mm-hmm. and that that process would still be tied to the initial eclipse that occurred in on November 8th. So there's a process, but, but the crunch of it will just be, you know, I think, I think we'll be able to enjoy our holiday season, you know, pretty, pretty well. I, I do too. I will say that I, for whatever reason, and I don't know why uh, the guides are saying it, this, this thing could go from like November 8th through maybe the first week of December. Yeah. Um, and maybe to the 15th, but then after that, there's really good energy around the holidays, around all the, you know, the Hanukkah, the Christmas, the whatever it is that you celebrate, whenever it is, if from, if if your holiday is anywhere from like the 15th to the end of the month, there's really good energy for that. Um, I would just say that um, I I would like to take this a second and say, and I will say this a lot in the next week, whatever goes down, that you don't like, and I and I get it, and this is our right as an American to protest. I get it, but you need to understand that there there are people out there that are not nice that um, really want to wreak havoc. So if you feel like you need to protest something after this day, be really careful. I, I yeah. wouldn't even, I would encourage you not to, to be completely honest with you. It's just like Jane six. They thought that Antifa was going to show up. Guess what? They were all by themselves and they all got rung up. Okay. If, if we go out there and counter protest, um, we're going to get rung up. Everybody's going to get rung up. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's protest in different ways. Let, let's yes. be careful and be safe. You know, and that ties back into that that third part, that Mars retrograde in Gemini, where ah, there is there this reevaluation, there this reassessment. We are, you know, as Americans, we we rely on our right, you know, our right to protest as part of our our dialogue, as part of our way of showing up and and voicing our displeasure if if something you know we feel strongly about and we have every right to gather and do that but perhaps with this you know that's one of the lessons that we're learning from Mars retrograde and Gemini is you can still protest but maybe there's a different way that we go about it maybe we do something more online ah online and I, I meant to mention that too um with regard to cuz Gemini rules communication right right mercury mm-hmm. communication it is not accidental that we've got, I made a note here to myself, who just took over Twitter? Oh God. Elon Musk, right? Yeah. So we I got- I didn't know this was that. a drinking game. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I didn't know this. <laughs> I didn't know this video was going to be a drinking game. I don't have anything to drink. And I just sorry. bought water. Go, me too. I, this is water up in here. I, I I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you hit me hard tonight, Effie, and I didn't. I didn't know this is like a margarita or tequila kind of thing. But I'm okay. I'm gonna be okay. I got my big girl panties on. Okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. I'm but, sorry. You, know, you, you were so gonna we said, say <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. You know, uh, you know. Twitter. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. And um, you know, there there's this. I I don't even want to say it out loud, so I'm gonna whisper it. <laughs> social yeah. you know that's growing apparently uh google for whatever god forsaken reason decided to make the app available right oh, google god. can you imagine google no. decided to yeah so so my point is you know there is when we that, talk that about protesting mercury thing mm-hmm. that's yeah what gemini saying. is ru- okay yeah yeah gemini that's is the ru- gemini thing so you're talking about yes Okay, because Gemini is ruled by Mercury, which it rules um, technology, which rules our communication. So my point in bringing that up was when you were talking about Mm. being careful if people decide to protest, there may be other means of expressing protest and displeasure. And it could be um, online. It could be through social media, but to be prepared for that as well in terms of 
if there are ways to do that ethically and safely, but also being prepared for what could be uh, a lot of hate speech, mm-hmm. a lot of misinformation yeah. or disinformation yeah. and that sort of thing. Um, just be prepared for, for that. You just have to be really careful. Mars retrograde. So whereas the tendency may have been leap first and check your bungee cord later. Now it's like, do we don't even leave. need to climb up a mountain? Right. We maybe not, don't even need to climb up a mountain right now. Maybe we just need to say, stay on a flat surface. For me. That's you know the kids. I mean? That's the kid. You and I are not leaving. Yeah. We're going to be mm-hmm. hot. I don't know about you, but I might be hiding in my bathroom. I don't know. I might you be know. preparing for like a tornado. Listen, <laughs> you won't see me out there. I promise you that. <laughs> I mean, but I'm, these kids, you know, these kids. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. For sure. Wow, for sure. that is really big. Um, sure. Yes. Yes, I think the guides are just saying, don't, you know, if you want the advice of the guides for what, what Afebe just told us, which is really important information, the guides are saying what what we just said, what what her and I just said that we would do. This is not a time to stick your neck out. This is a time to go, to stay home, Mind your own business because I'm going to tell you, this is the best advice. This is what the guides have been telling me about 10 times a day when they have to walk me down off the cliff. Um, And that is, you know, look, some beloved big name people may not win. You know, one or two may not win. That's going to cause a lot of hue and cry among us. and, and And it, who knows? But the overall picture is, We add seats to the Senate. We add seats to the House. You guys, it's a beautiful, sunny day in democracy land. Let's not get caught up in one or two races. And I look, we got to go through the five stages of grief. Then we got to go through the five stages of grief. But then we need to just allow these people to take their seat in the Senate and in the House of Representatives and roll their sleeves up and get busy and get to work. Yeah. We have sure. to get things done. We have 2 years to get things done. And if we don't get things done, these Gen Z, these new voters are going to give the Liz Cheney's out there a chance because they're about results. They're yeah. done with seeing this you know, senior citizen senate. You know, they're done with seeing House of Representatives in a Senate that doesn't look like them. Yeah. And they want change. And so let's just get behind the people that win and let's try to keep our positive attitudes and let's just try to go into 2023 knowing that we have an opportunity to really make a big difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the thing is, even, you know, going back to things from this astrological perspective, the wheel never stops. You know, the, the, the charts that are pulled, the planets that are in motion, the earth itself, you know, going on its axis. So no energy is stagnant to the point of it just won't move. Everything will continue to move. And I was really struck by something that you and your guys just said too, Susan, in terms of younger people, perhaps you know, wanting change to the point where they would align themselves with someone like Liz Cheney, who, if she's saying what they need to hear, or what's pinging them is, you know, do, doing the investigation. That's something that, you know, again, I, you know, I, I was with a, a background in journalism, you know, t- check your facts, do your homework, do your research, because I do think one of the challenges that we face is because we are so in a, in a, you know, now, now, now media cycle, we go on Twitter or these other places and you see a few headlines, you see the same headline 10 times and you accept it as true. And so if, you know, you begin to see this face of quote unquote change and that face is telling you the things that, that the old people aren't telling you. And so you go, ah, exactly what I wanted to hear. I'm on board. But does that, do they know that her, what her, what did you say? 90% voting record was, you know what I mean? So even if she's willing to ship that so she can do what she's got to do, hold her feet to the fire, hold her accountable for that. Make her explain that, make her go on the record to say as part of her new platform, 
I will not do this in the future. I am willing to support a woman's right to abortion. Make her do that instead of just whatever she says and accepting it as gospel. You know, do do your homework, do your research. Yes, I agree. And I hope these kids do. Um, I think overall they're they're better at discerning because they grew up in the digital world. So. You know, yeah. they grew up in those chat rooms with the creepy, you know, 40 year old who's talking to the eight year old. <laughs> you know what I mean? They grew up in such a different world than I did, right? Eight. It was a margarita <laughs> night. Let's see now. I'm doing a it margarita to night. <laughs> definitely now I'm a doing margarita it to night. You. I, but, you know, but they did. They grew up in such a crazy, you know, world with active yeah. shooter drills, right? I mean, they're oh, just gosh. not us. They're they're nothing like what the life that I grew up with, right? They're resilient. I tell you that they are resilient to the next level. They are resilient, and you know, they can they can handle a lot. They're not. They're not afraid. Yeah, they can handle it. And we need them to handle it. We need them to handle every bit of it. Because, you know, the future ultimately does lie in their hands. So but we've got to do our part to help inform them, encourage them, and not let them be led astray. And get their back, you know, support and them. Back. And, support and them. know that we hear, I hear you, right? I, yeah. they, they're, No one is listening to them. They have no yeah. voice. Um so I really feel like in as much as we can say, look, I I haven't experienced what you have experienced, but I hear you. At least that's, that's something. It. Right? Sometimes that's all it takes. That's all it takes to open the door and 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 form those connections and, and you know, and have allies. You know, that's that's really what it's all about. So. So do you so I feel like and maybe. <laughs> maybe my guides did this for me. I don't know, but I feel like I used all the, the critical information that you gave us and yeah. I made a nice little story that benefits what I want to hear. <laughs> no, you, you keep it real as always, as do your guides. And, and I love that about you, you know, it, because we were just talking about connecting and that's what help what helps people really connect to you as, you know, as someone who is able to keep very real topics and, and relate them to people from all walks of life. That's a gift, my friend. That's a gift. Thank you. So can you see, and, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but if, if something comes to mind, share it with us, if not, I get it. Cause this is, this picture is too, I still got pie grass and charts. And stuff. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm going to have to do like some kind of meditation to get that out of my head. Cause some people like that stuff, but to me, that's like a horror movie. Anyway, um, do you, do you see given, given the unique aspects, the unique astrological aspects that are, that are sort of directing our energies right now, can you see those unique astrological aspects, especially Pluto and the moon illuminating? Do you feel like they're telling me to ask you about the day, November 8th? Do you feel like we'll, we could hear some news that day? Or, I mean, what could be illuminated? What could be like, blown up and just surprising and illuminating. Do you get any sense for that at all? You, what else might happen that day? Um, I think number, I mean, cause we know that especially in some of those tight races, we're not going to know the results until what, maybe the next day or whatever. But I think the day of, we will certainly uh, perhaps surprisingly, as you're, as you're saying, and the guides are asking, we will certainly see, um, get a, get a sense of, what the polls are looking like, how many people decided to actually show up, where did they decide to show up, you know, in what numbers, um, it, was it actually more peaceful than anybody anticipated, or perhaps, unfortunately, the, you know, the, but I think the actual nuts and bolts of what our democracy looks like at this point in time, because mind you, this is going to be a very different 2020. We were we were still locked down. We were in the thick of a lot like nobody was even thinking about trying to, you know. So so there's this notion of, you know, coming, coming. We're, we're not clear of the pandemic, but we're in a very different time uh, during this election cycle. And I think that may be a surprising element because 
we will actually see our process in motion in a way that we have not seen in a very long time. And I think that could be, you know, that could be really illuminating, perhaps surprising in some way. So I certainly think that's going to come out on, on November 8th. We're going to see the extent to which, at least from what we're told and, and, and what we can see unfolding, our system still works. You know? our system still works because we've certainly been told by, you know, we said the media and, and else, you know, that be careful because everything's breaking down and we don't know if, if our vote, is it even worth it going to the polls? Are they going to stop you because you don't have the proper ID, blah, 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 blah. Like, it, are there, are there, you know, is it still working? Is the engine still running? Mm -hmm. You know, do we have enough, enough people who are there who are going to, you know, those who have, can you imagine volunteering to work the polls at this point in time? Can you imagine? So I think that's going to come out as well. You know, people who will be able to, to say and, and bear witness, I was there. I felt safe. Things worked smooth. You know, after everything we've heard, things actually worked okay. You know, things were okay. I think we're going to see a lot of that on that day. And then certainly remembering talking about the eclipse those couple of weeks after. When, when those uh when the who's my guy on cnn john john shoot talk about pie graphs he's he's um he's a guy he always comes up with the chart oh yeah 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 you know, I, don't know john, like, I do yeah yeah john yeah, but uh, you know what I'm yeah i do he starts calling those races you know before the polls actually close he's like yeah. you know it's a half of a fraction here and two-thirds yeah. of a pie chart there and yeah. he's pretty darn good at it yeah so those kinds of things i think we're going to see um and after that i think it's going to be you know depending like you said we got to your guide set you got to be prepared there could be some incredible wins that we didn't expect and there could be some heartbreaking losses that we think oh gosh you know where do we go from here but whatever that is and however it falls out, we're here. We're still here and we still got to make it work and we got to regroup and we got to go that reevaluation. That may be where that, but that Mars in retrograde and Gemini really kicks in and we begin to say, okay, let's have another conversation, you know, get the margaritas if we need to, <laughs> you know, let's do Salt what we and wine, do. please. And, and some lime, you know, but but let's figure out what our next steps are, because this won't be the end of the road, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. it, you know, mm -hmm. we still got to get get to 2024, period. You know, and maybe the road that we thought we were going to take, you know, maybe maybe instead of, of going in a van, we got an Uber. You know, I don't know. But we're going to get there one way or another. You're right. I agree with you. I think overall yeah. the big energy, and again, the guides are like, look at the big energy. Don't big get picture. caught up on some small or even one race, even if it's a big race, don't get caught up on that. Yeah. Look at the big picture. The big picture is, and and they, they're saying too, that the media is going to get caught up on that. Right. I mean, oh. it, it just makes me crazy that they pick one thing and then they you know, just replay it ad nauseum. And it's not even a representative of the, of the whole picture. So you're going to see that. So just do yeah. what FFA is saying, just focus on moving forward. We're going to get there. Maybe it's not a bus. Maybe it's not an Uber. Maybe you and I are hitchhiking. I don't know. We're going to make it. We're going we're to gonna make, make it. it. We are going to have the house and the Senate. I believe we're going to have the presidency in 2024. I don't think we're going to lose the presidency in 2024. But I think that if if Congress and the Senate doesn't really start hitting some home runs, that we could have a shakeup in the in the Senate in the Congress. That that's the part that's at play in my it is the way I feel right now, the way the guides feel right now. Yeah. Well, and, and very, you know, goes in line with, with what we've been talking from that astrological standpoint as well. I mean, what is there to evaluate, reevaluate if, if everything's been status quo, 
So, so it, you know, there's definitely that, that sense of we do need to be prepared for that and know that we, no matter what happens, we have to come together and begin to think independently, evaluate the extent to which have we been, to use um, your example, have we been relying on major media outlets for our, the bulk of our information and to help inform our opinions? Or is it time for us to begin to do more of our own research, our own, you know, have more dialogues amongst ourselves so that we can form our own independent opinions and, and talk and build communities of grassroots? Like, what happened to that? You know? <laughs> You know, so, I mean, I haven't heard a lot about that since Obama, you know, where know, he, right? he, he lit that on fire. He did. Um, so, so, you know, those kinds of, of where every bed, everybody begins to feel like they're stakeholders yes. in what happens as opposed to always looking to these quote unquote experts to tell mm-hmm. us what's going on. And we should be able to rely on that. That might very well be some of, some of what we're challenged to do, depending on what, what comes out. And if that's the case. We, we're up to the task. I think we'll do it. I think we will too. I think you're so on the money. Like I, I this is why I love doing these collabs with you. It's like our guides are sitting together. They're probably drinking margaritas and they didn't tell us, but anyway, whatever. Um, the, the guides have been talking the last two days about how, you know, a lot of these journalists have been fired or let go and, you know, newspapers and magazines and news um, rooms are just not staffed. They're not, they don't want those hard hitting investigative, you know, pieces anymore. And you see these, these people going out and writing books instead of, you know, and I'm sure it's irritated some of you. It's irritated me. You write a book and, and instead of maybe calling the DOJ or the FBI and be like, Hey, I got some stuff for you. Um, But they're trying to make their salary, right? They're trying to find a way to monetize. But to your point, the guides keep saying, we will do exactly what you're saying. Um, And then you're going to see things like the Midas touch, um, whom I have gotten kind of addicted to Ben Micellis, because he comes on every day. He's an attorney. He tells me what's going on. It makes sense. Um, And so I think we're going to be looking for our own news outlets that might be grassroots that might be you and I talking and sharing well that's what I liked about Twitter right I could follow an actual journalist or an actual attorney or an actual whoever uh intel person and I can talk to them whereas before you never had that kind of you didn't have access you didn't have that access but now I do I can talk to a guy on Twitter who's an intel specialist about Ukraine Right. Yeah. Um, so but I don't think that's going to go away. I think that's going to morph into something different. And I think that now media is going to become of the people for the people. It's not going to be controlled by three or four corporations. It's going to yeah. be it's going to be crowdsourced. For sure. For sure. And I think that's as that goes, you know, to this whole change and transformation that we're seeing that scorpionic birth and rebirth, death and rebirth. You, you said when you first, when you started on that point, Susan, you mentioned how, you know, these these used to be respected journalists who we could, you know, and how slowly but surely they they, you know, they've either been let go, released or, you know, these corporate entities have changed. And I think what a lot of that, because I, when I was in journalism, I was, you know, we're going back to early mid 90s. Part of what's happened, you talked. We talked about access. A lot of those people, we used to be able to have call the mayor's office. Hey, I've got a story I'm writing. Can I come talk to your public relations person? Answer used to be yes. Now the answer is no because everything has become so insulated that that you know, and everybody's looking for the the, the ball. You know, the the other shoe to drop. That what used to be a very respected profession in terms of unbiased opinion you come in i give you the story i can rely on you to to do an unbiased story and lo and behold you know that that either wasn't happening or not to the satisfaction of the corporate interests i.e i don't know if you noticed and you know maybe some of your audience there's some there's some serious changes going on at cnn yes 
yes. slowly tilting its wheel because how long and how many years now have they been accused of being too liberal and yeah. having too, you know, and so now they caught on and they're like, oh, well, let's get rid of this one and let's get rid of that one and let's begin to tilt our wheels a bit. You know what I mean? And so you're looking like, wait a minute, did you just sell out? Yeah. Yeah. Did you really just sell out? So yes, Midas, matter of fact, let me write that Midas, what did you say it's called? Midas, Midas touch. touch, Midas Touch. Midas Touch, all right, I'm and, gonna look um, into that. There's a couple of brothers and their attorneys, but I, but okay, Ben cool. is, is he, he's succinct, he's clear, um, he's a Democrat through and through, he's mm-hmm. a, he's a guy that's just for justice and, um, and it's on YouTube. And so cool. I find that that's where I'm getting my news, especially because cool. I'm very interested, right, in all of the, there's all of these um, grand juries happening right now that are secret grand juries that are happening. And 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 in the past, we would have scores of reporters out there yeah. watching who was going in and who was coming out because it's secret. You, you, we don't know, but um but now there's just a few, one or two. Right. Hey, this guy went right. into this court. Now, right. next month, last month, he went into that court. And so they're trying to piece together what is happening with these uh, grand juries. So, right. Um, so right. I go That's to him for that kind of information. I'm uh, going to check them out too. Yeah. You know, I don't, Thanks. I don't, I need people that are straight to the point. I, I want to know what's going on and I want to know that I can trust you. And uh, and I think this is what what we're saying, right, is that it's we're going to be sourcing our own news. And I just think that some of these people that are on Twitter probably will leave. And and we know that what is his name? Is it Jack Dorsey, who um, created uh, some of the code or the or Twitter? And now he's starting Blue Sky and uh, yeah, social um, yeah. it's not out yet, but I feel, I have a good feeling about it. Cause I feel like what he might do is make it Twitter, Facebook. It, it might be like a, a new animal. There we go. And there I think go. it's reevaluate, be, reevaluate. And I think re-evaluate. it's and communication and communication. Right? And I and think it's going to be, it. you know, it's going to be moderated. You know what yeah. I mean? It's going to be yeah. moderated, and and the la- and I think we should probably I I should stop talking at some point. <laughs> no, but it's no, but um, these are really powerful points. And what I love about what you're doing right now in this moment, so since you're do- you're looking ahead, you're looking at okay, whatever happens now, let's look ahead at what the possibilities are, and that's exactly what I think we're being led to do, is not just get too hung up yes. on which direction it goes in, what the what the final numbers are, and the final counts, and the number of seats that we have. We know how we want it to go, but let's not let that be, you know, the, the end all and be all. We got to think smart, because there's a lot of road ahead of us, and so, no, I love every bit of what you do. You just told me about a, a source that I had no, aware, and I'm sure your other, you know, your audience will appreciate that as well if they're not aware, because we are talking about that independent thinking that we just, you know, we talked about earlier. That That is very tied together of what we're, we, we can't just look at these established places that we have before. That's part of the shakeup. And some yes. of these shakeups are meant for our good. They're not comfortable. And maybe we we are. Why can't I sit and look at CBS News or whomever, you know, NBC or whomever at night and get what I need, know that I can rely on it, spend my little 30 minutes, you know, and get caught up on the weather and go about my business. No, now I got to go log on to YouTube and look, but that's okay. That's the information age. That's what we do. And if that's what it takes to to be more empowered ultimately that's what it is is we we are being requested essentially by the universe and our guides to be more empowered and to empower ourselves rather than rely on Mm -hmm. other sources that we've been taught or conditioned to empower us had no idea we were going to you know, maybe we didn't need the margarita. Maybe we just needed the tequila straight with just some lime and just some salt on the hand. You know, maybe that's what we were supposed to do. I don't know. 
you but you hit me job. hard a couple of times i was like oh whoa hello hello Woo. somebody get a copy of that bus that just went by she okay but i but i'm okay i feel better now i i really do and i really love i love your energy i love that you're like look we've got to keep going we cannot let one thing or two things or, you know, look, by now it's like 500 things, but we can't get caught up in that negativity. It doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve our community. It doesn't serve our country. We have to, we owe it to ourselves to stay positive. If it's negative and, and you're not even, just because it's negative, you know, you say, well, I don't want to not look at negative stuff. I want to be well-informed. It's not well-informed. It's half of it is not even true. So Go for the sources that make sense for you. Find those true voices out there. Block out everything else. Yeah, take absolutely. really good care of yourself. Absolutely. Oh, by all means. And I love when you always say that. Take care of yourself. Because that's for sure what we're meant to do. And and thank you for giving me this space. You know, we always enjoy. And, and this is our, we didn't do the political stuff before. Um, but, but I wanted to, you know, I told you I'm perfectly comfortable doing that because one of the things that I do enjoy, and I think it, it may be part of my distinction as a light worker is that I have this background in just the facts and in journalism at the same time that, you know, I'm devoting myself to spiritual work. And, and so with tarot and astrology, I'm not, I'm, you know, some people, we get a bad rap because, you know, as a psychic medium, we get this rap, you know. Woo, 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 and we're just out in the clouds somewhere. And it's like, no, no, sweetheart, I'm brass tacks. I'm, I'm pretty brass tacks, <laughs> More, you know, most of the time. Um, and I, I, I try to approach things, certainly, from that larger perspective. Like you said, the guides keep saying, big picture, big picture. These things aren't happening to us. They're happening for us at all times. Mm. You know, they're happening for us. There is a bigger, a bigger picture and a larger plan. Um, but I love the idea that we can talk about these things in a spiritual context, but very, you know, difficult topics that that sometimes are not associated with doing the spiritual work. And it all goes hand in hand, you know, because ultimately, what are we? We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so to be able to tie that together, as you do all the time, but to have me here in your space and invite me to do that with you. It's absolutely been a privilege and a joy. Oh my gosh. The privilege is all mine. I so enjoy your input. I love your energy. Um, if you guys haven't checked out her channel, you should do so because you guys know anything about pick a card. Um, you know, you, you can actually get a reading through YouTube by watching her pull the cards and pick the card that that vibes with you, that's one thing. But she also does the um, new moon, the full moon um, forecast. Look, moon, these things, we just talked about it. These things have a big impact on our daily lives. So you can tune into her channel, Touched by Tarot, and you can learn, okay, this new moon is going to be bringing these energies. Maybe I should be aware of this. Maybe I should think about, just take five minutes and think, how could this possibly be playing out in my life this yeah. week? Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I think this could be playing out over here and I'm going to pay attention. You know, this. these are tools, you guys. These are tools that you can use to live a better life, to live a more, an easier life, to be more in the flow with the universe. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Susan. Thank you for that. So and which is one reason why I come to your channel. You know, it's, it's just about having a better understanding of what of what's going on around us. And, and at least it gives us a sense. And sometimes it's just the affirmation, you know, I, I hear it from your perspective. Somebody else hears it from my perspective, right. comments, you know, people leave comments. And so there's an interaction, whether it's your, whether you're the person on, on YouTube or whether you're the person watching and you're part of that community, everybody's voice matters. And, and, and I think we, we learn from one another, you know, so, Absolutely. It's a community. It's all good. I love that it's a community. It is a community. It is. 
Excellent. Mm -hmm. And so if you guys would like a reading with FFA, you can go to trulytouchedbytarot.com. Her YouTube channel is Touched by Tarot. And so there's a little difference there. But if you want a reading, check her out. Um, I can vouch for her readings. I've had a reading and it was phenomenal. It was really a powerful reading uh, that set my ship on the right track. It was really, really good. So I can vouch for her, her readings for sure. Thank you guys for joining both of us tonight or today or wherever you are. We really appreciate you spending the time. And I know that I can speak for FFA when I say that we're sending big love to you. Um, take really good care of yourself. Okay. This is uh, the energy is a little bit bouncy. It's kind of like turbulence when you're on an airplane or you're, you're in a bus and you're like hitting all the potholes, you know, it's a little bouncy. Um, be flexible, roll with it. Right. Uh, if you're rigid, it's going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to hit an elbow. Right. So just try to be flexible with the energy and love yourself through it. Right. Right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And know that we're gonna have a smooth landing. You know, might be a little rough for a minute, but we're gonna we're gonna land that plane. We're gonna be we're gonna all right. Land. We're gonna land it. We're gonna land Absolutely. it. It's, Absolutely. It's gonna be all good. Thank you, FFA, for joining me. Thank you. And thanks, thank you, you so guys, much. for tuning in. You guys, take and thank care. you, everybody. Okay. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, bye. for entertainment purposes only.